Mm, that's drunk. Carl Sagan once famously said, and I'm paraphrasing here a bit, the significance of our lives is determined by our own wisdom and courage. We are the custodians of life's meaning. Knowledge is preferable to ignorance, better by far to embrace the hard truth than a reassuring fable. If we crave some cosmic purpose, then let us find ourselves a worthy goal. Sagan was a brilliant writer, not just because of the depth of his knowledge and wisdom, but because he was such an effective communicator. He was able to sum up complex and nuanced ideas in ways the layman could understand. And he was never afraid to confront the really hard questions that we all eventually face as human beings, like, what is the meaning of life? Is there a god or some kind of creator? Is there a heaven or a hell? Development team Manly and Associates made a bold statement in an attempt to answer these questions with their game Wizard of Oz for Super Nintendo, made in 1993, proudly declaring that life has no meaning, with this game serving as clear, definitive proof. But don't get the wrong impression here, because while life has no meaning for them, evidently they do believe in some kind of afterlife, because Wizard of Oz cheerfully and joyously delivers the player to the slobbering mouth of hell via a meager gray plastic cartridge. As you can see, this is a 2D side-scrolling platformer where you play as Dorothy, although that looks a lot more like Christy McNichol or even Joe from The Facts of Life. You have three lives and no continues to get through four countries made up of seven or eight stages each, and you end up with zero faith in God after trying to play through this game. The B and A buttons both jump, Y does a projectile attack that has limited ammo you collect along the way, and the ammo here is not easy to come by, so you really have to pick your spots when using it, and it doesn't help that the game doesn't even bother to tell you how much ammo you have. And when you run out, and you will, you have to rely on the X button that does a kick with a pretty pathetic range, and that brings me to the hit detection. This is one of those games where every freaking thing in this game wants you dead, and it doesn't even matter if they're on screen, off screen, or not even on the same plane as your character. Like I'm standing on this fence, and tons of stuff is hurting me? Then what's the point of the freaking fence? What, is this thing shooting spitballs at me or something? Even the hands of a clock can hurt you. And even better, you can't kick while jumping. Ugh. Oh, and of course, the hit detection isn't just bad when taking damage, it's even worse when jumping. You regularly fall through platforms, there's no rhyme or reason to it, it's just sometimes you don't land where you're supposed to. I swear this game is possessed or something. There's two other huge problems that jump out immediately when playing this one. First, there are certain enemies that are like 10 times faster than you could ever possibly react, like these vulture things. Ugh. An imbalance of speed that big is game-breaking. But no, Wizard of Oz doesn't stop there. It also throws in lots of confusing perspective changes, like making the player guess what they can and can't jump on, leading to all sorts of annoying problems and cheap deaths. And not only that, the game also implements this confusing maze layout where you're going through these doors and trees. But the problem is, when you enter a door, the game just places you off to the side. Wait, which door did I just come out of? Where do I go next? It's just a miserable time, and it makes me wonder what I am doing with my life. <sighs> so the main objective here, other than just completing each stage, is to collect bricks that will build a bridge to advance to the next country, as well as tickets that will allow admittance into the Emerald City at the end. One positive I will point out is that you can eventually play as a few other characters, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion, and not only can you switch between them at any time, they each get their own life bar. Hey, great, so now I can suffer through this thrown together level design with these enemy patterns that had like 30 seconds of thought put into them with four life bars. It doesn't help that Tin Man can't jump or duck, and every other character's attack range might be even worse than Dorothy's. Switching characters sounds nice, but all it does is extend your misery. Sure, there's items you can collect that can kinda sorta help you or whatever, but who even cares? I'm done with this crap. And just one last kick in the nuts, if you lose all your lives, you're doomed to this 24 character password system. No freaking thanks. To go back to Carl Sagan's wise words, if you do crave a cosmic purpose, please do find yourself a worthy goal, and for the love of God, make sure it doesn't include playing Wizard of Oz for Super Nintendo. Instead, make sure it includes a happy, funny little guy like Clyde T. Dog. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.